from one of the Chili's employees who survived William Wood Jr.'s robbery turned rampage. Wood was sentenced to life in prison this morning, but not before hearing from the survivor, the mother of Stephen Goodneck and the father of Christopher Hicks, the men he killed. News Channel 9's Rob Hackford will share what those family members said to Wood when they came face to face. But first, we want to bring in News Channel 9's Andrew Donovan. He's live outside of Chili's with new details, Andrew, about just what happened that night. Christy, and those details are heartbreaking. Four people were inside the Chili's when William Wood Jr. went inside to rob the restaurant. He brought a gun. He killed two of those workers. The other two were lucky enough to get out alive, and they're the only ones tonight who can truly share the horror of what happened that night. Chris and Steve were special and rare. Jessica Selm has not waited tables at Chili's since that Friday in September when she had to stay after the restaurant closed to clean tables. Not a day goes by that I don't replay the whole thing, wishing I could have done something to change what had happened. William Wood Jr. targeting the restaurant that fired him, first for robbery, then for murder. He didn't pick people at random. He knew these people. He knew their routine. He knew their lives. He knew their families. He knew that they had children. He orders three of them to lie face down on their stomachs on the floor. And he orders Stephen, the manager, to open the safe. Stephen Goodnecht followed orders inside the restaurant's office, but would open fire anyway. The other three just outside the door, listening to the deadly shot before Wood came out, next killing Christopher Hicks. Jessica and Marcus had to have known that they only had seconds to live. I am thankful that the gun jammed, but in those few seconds, I was the most scared I've ever been. Once I got into the office, it was hard getting my head straight to call for help. She first called 911, then called another crew member who had just left. Elaine, Chris and Steve were just shot. It was well. A former coworker murdering not only another coworker, but the love of her life. She and Chris were dating after having met at Chili's. We all had a special place in our dysfunctional Chili's family, even Will. It pains me to say that we all share endearing memories with him. Everyone made an effort to embrace him, regardless of his issues. People always made sure he had a ride home, had bus fare. We even sang him happy birthday. Will was one of us. As I spoke with the 911 operator, I just held Steve's hand saying help is coming. But it was too late. Holding his hand as he passed away was devastating. And it still breaks my heart every day. When given the chance to speak, Wood says he apologizes for his actions and will accept any punishment. For now, that punishment, that sentence, is life in prison on the state charges, but next he could face the death penalty in federal court. Live in DeWitt, Andrew Donovan, News Channel 9. Andrew, thanks. And as those new details were presented in court today, the families of the victims also had a lot to say about the lives lost back in September. News Channel 9's Rob Hackford was in court this morning and has more on how the crime has changed their lives. It's been eight months of intense emotion for the families of Christopher Hicks and Stephen Goodconnect. Monday morning, those individuals came together and took their pain and sorrow and put them to work in the same courtroom as their loved one's killer. Oh, my God. Was he going to kill us all? As DA Bill Fitzpatrick spoke about the lives lost on September 15th. Their final thoughts because of the people they were. The pain from that night at the Chili's in DeWitt was relived in the courtroom. I cannot imagine the fear and the terror Chris and Stephen must have endured. I had fallen asleep expecting to wake up to my father. Instead, I had woken up to the news that would change my life forever. One after another, they spoke. My heart is broken. I am numb. I am only a piece of who I was. He won't be here to see me graduate from college. He won't be here to walk me down the aisle, and he won't be here to meet my future children. The families of both victims stood together. Christopher's father, Kevin Hicks, and girlfriend Elaine, as well as the Good Connects, daughter Adriana, and mother Nancy Chapel, sharing their loss with the court. I'm going to be honest. I had a lot of trouble trying to figure out what I wanted to say about the man that I love in front of the man that murdered him. And when I see an image of this man, I see the face of evil. An apology from William Wood Jr. met with disgust. To my understanding, he would like to offer his apologies uh, and his regrets. Wow. Please, please. But anyone likes it or not, I am sorry for what I've done. And I'm willing to accept any punishment. 
if I could take it all back, I would in a heartbeat. Of course, this is not the last time William Wood Jr. will be in court. Federal prosecutors are pursuing the death penalty, and those family members made it very clear they hope that sentence is carried out. In Syracuse, Rob Hackford, News Channel 9.